Hey there, Flock. Mike here with Epic Duck Studios, and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today I'm going to be painting Basha from Iron Skulls Boys from Warhammer Underworlds in comic style. I'm going to begin by just giving the whole model a solid white base coat. I'm going to be using Citadel Ceramic White for the most part. I've already primed the model white, but I really want to make sure the white's just really punchy before I start. This is going to be one of my variants of comic style where I start with the all-white miniature, then do all of my black inking next. And this produces what I call the coloring book stage or the illustration stage, where you basically have a black and white drawing, and then you go ahead and color it in as the last step instead of doing the color up front, which is my kind of normal approach. So with a pretty solid white base coat in place, I'm going to get out some of my favorite tool here, Higgins Black Magic. This is a waterproof drawing ink, and I'm going to be using this to create all of the sort of illustration style detail on the model. Now you should be able to find Higgins Black Magic at most fine art stores, but other black inks will work just as well. My favorite, if I'm not using Higgins, is to go with Daler Rowney FW Black. Liquitex Carbon Black ink will work as well, but it's just a little bit more translucent, so sometimes you might need to do a second coat in an area. And when you're doing a lot of really small fine line work, you don't want to have to try and do them twice. So the more opaque, the better. So my first step here as I'm creating all of the black ink detail is to just go around the model and basically outline anything that's kind of a big sculpted detail. So I'm just creating black outlines, isolating one part of the model from its neighbors. That's basically what I'm just going around the whole model is doing that over and over and over. So you can see I've sort of outlined the belt, which helps separate it from the armor, from his chainmail, and so on. And now I'm kind of doing the same thing under the arm, where there's a separation between the armor and his skin. And I'm just going to continue working my way around the model, just creating these black outlines around different details. So one other thing you'll see me do as I'm working on the black lining is create really large volumes of shadow. And normally I'm doing that in hard to reach areas or areas on the underside of the model. For example, earlier I did it underneath his outstretched right arm. Sort of the whole bottom side of the arm, roughly a third of it, I just smeared black right on. And the reason for that is it's a detail that you won't ever really see at tabletop viewing angles. Looking at a model from below is not a common thing. You know, normally we're standing well above them, or at the very least, we're getting down and looking at them at sort of like that model's eye view. And you're never looking below a model. So anything sort of on like the bottom, like any underslung surfaces kind of facing downward are typically unimportant to this style of painting. You don't need to worry about the details that are there. And it also gives us a little bit of an extra benefit in that what it does is it creates a sort of in-place outline. And what I mean by that is when you look at the arm sort of straight on or from even a little bit of a downward angle, if there is a black, sort of like say the bottom third of it is basically solid black, what's going to happen is at profile you're going to see sort of a black line around the bottom of the arm. And this helps create the illusion that this is an illustration. By having black outlines where we can fit them onto a 3D object, it creates the impression that they should be there everywhere else. And mentally, people begin to see what they expect to see, which is a black and white illustration. One thing I'd like to add is that even with practice, this is still a pretty time-consuming process. Painting in this style does typically take longer than a more traditional painting method, and certainly longer than using something like Contrast Paints does. And the reason for that is you're effectively painting the whole model twice. We're kind of going around the whole model, we're detailing every single surface of this model, and then we're going through and adding color and doing it again. And whether you do the ink first and then the color, or the color first and then the ink, you're really approaching the whole model twice. And so, understandably, it takes longer than doing something once. So this is something, I love reserving this style for games that have low model count. Things like Marvel Crisis Protocol, Riot Quest, and Relic Blade. Or things like Warhammer Underworlds, where a squad contains between like 3 and 7 models at most. Because it's really manageable doing a small squad like that. For me personally, I don't think I'd want to approach anything bigger than say a 10 man squad at a time with this kind of style. But, if you're in the mood to try and paint an army like this, all power to you. Just, you know, a little fair warning, it's probably going to be a bit of a slog. So you can see here, we're getting really close to being done the black detailing. The whole model has that really good illustration feel. We're just kind of finishing up the weapons and his face now. So I discussed before creating these sort of large volumes of black shadow, and you can see I've done the same thing on the bottom of his cudgel here. You know, the whole bottom side is entirely black, as well as roughly a quarter of the handle.
So now I've switched to a longer, thinner brush. I'm gonna be using this now to add some finer detail. There's some areas where I want either tighter, more controlled lines, or even some small surface details like nicks and scratches in the armor. And this is where I'm really gonna be using the small brush. I'm also gonna use it to create the impression of sort of like some gradients and shading by adding hatch marks that sort of taper into the bigger black areas I've already created. The idea with hatch marks or hashing is that they create a visual gradient in color, going from basically a lighter color to a darker color, in this case from you know red or green into black, by basically being a bunch of sort of parallel lines that are very thin at one point and very thick at the other and just at the very bottom basically just merge into one solid shape. So you can see I'm creating just little tiny, you know, parallel strokes and, you know, they start... Either they start in a shadow or they end in a shadow, depending on how you want to look at it. it. Kind of depends on which angle is holding the brush. But And what these are doing are creating the impression that this has been kind of sketched in place by a comic artist. Because really this is a very common way comic book artists create the idea of shadow and even of shape at times. You know, if you want to imply a curve, you do a bunch of little sort of swooping hash marks that kind of, again, run parallel to each other. But it's a really good way to convey changes in texture or in light volume when you've got nothing to work with but black and white. And that forms the basis of a lot of different comic book artists' work, especially in the older eras of comics in the golden and silver age. You know, it was very, very common for black ink to inform almost the entire comic and color was really added as an afterthought in a lot of cases. So now here I'm even adding some black onto what is otherwise a sort of forward-facing surface of the model. This is, you know, across the shoulder pad. And the reason for that is I'm using it in this case, instead of creating shadow, I'm more using it to create texture. And it's sort of creating the impression that this is a metallic surface because it's got, you know, some grain to it in the way that a polished steel might. You know, it's got sort of black lines running in parallel along the curved surface of the shoulder pad. And it gives the idea that it's kind of been buffed in that direction. There's some grain to the surface. Now, in comic style, we want to create the idea of sort of shadows in our environment because that's really how you imply that something's metallic is it's reflecting something. But the something's actually not important. If you look at a lot of classic comics, there's always these sort of like ambiguous black shadows that are just sort of warping their way around you know, metallic shapes or metallic surfaces. And they're meant to imply that, you know, the surface is reflective and it's reflecting a nearby shadow or something. But there's not a specific thing they're reflecting. It's just sort of an ambiguous environmental element that lets you know that this is metal as opposed to skin or flesh or fabric. So now I'm getting into detailing the face by creating all the different outlines around it. And this is something I'm exclusively doing with the smaller brush. I don't really want any large, you know, chunky shadows on the face. I want the face to all be very, very controlled. It's obviously the focal point of the model. And it's also got the most delicate detail on this model. You know, like his teeth are much smaller than any other element on this model. And so I obviously want to pay respect to that and just use an appropriately sized brush and appropriately sized lines. The thing with line work is that a heavy line implies a heavy substance. You know, it's fine on the armor and on the weapons to have these big, heavy, bulky lines. But on something like Flesh, you want it to look a little bit softer and a little bit more pliable. Even though he's an orc, his skin's still going to be softer than the end of a cudgel. So you can see now we're really getting to the point where the black and white illustration feels very complete or at least very, very close to it. You can look at this model in just black and white and you can read all of the detail. You can tell he's wearing armor. You can see there's belts and straps and shoulder pads and he's carrying cudgels and wearing gloves. 
every part of this model has now been detailed in some way, and I'm really just sort of creating some extra volume to the shadow at this point. So you can do as much or as little this sort of volume building as you want. You can just kind of carry forward with color at this point, or you can keep adding in as much sort of surface detail as you want, you know, little nicks and scratches, or you can take little style cues from things like Borderlands where there's just sort of random little folds and kind of coffee stain style, you know, details on surfaces that just imply that things are dirty and messy and scraped up a little bit, etc., etc. You can really do as much or as little surface detail in here as you want. So now I'm coming back in with a little bit of white paint, again using Citadel Ceramite White, and I'm just doing a few little touch-ups because there's a few areas where the black kind of went where I didn't want it to, and this is just a quick easy way to fix that. Either to brighten up an area where maybe I've smudged something, or just to fix a line that kind of ended up out of place. This also pairs really well with doing the initial line work with that little bit larger brush, because yeah, you might make a few little mistakes, but it's actually quicker to correct a mistake sometimes than it is to not make it in the first place. And this can definitely be one of those cases. All right, we're done all the black and white work now, and it's time to finally take this coloring book style miniature and color it in. So you can see here, I'm gonna be using Citadel Contrast Paint for this. But I'm not using it in the sort of typical way of contrast. I'm not letting it pool up to create shadows and highlights. I'm actually putting it on in very, very thin glazes. So the color is fairly flat and consistent. So I'm obviously starting with Orc Flesh. That's probably a bit of a given. And I'm just going to work around his face, his arms. And that's pretty much it for this color. There's not a lot of actual exposed flesh on him. The idea here is that I'm putting on the contrast paint in fairly thin, even coats. So the color is, again, pretty consistent, but it still allows the black ink to show through. So what we're really doing is we're tinting the white parts and more or less leaving the black alone. Now the black will get pushed a little bit back and forth, especially with the red. It tends to be just a little more potent. The green, not so much. You know, the green really lets the black show through, but the red does kind of tint it a little bit, makes it feel just a tiny bit brown. Sorry while I was talking there, I used a little bit of Blood Angel's Red to paint his tongue, and now I'm getting out some snake bite leather for, well, all the leather. That one's pretty straightforward. So there's different straps kind of holding his armor together, basically buckling his shoulder pads to his pants, it seems to be. You know, it kind of works its way around. And yeah, I'm just, again, applying this in just a single thin coat, just really coloring the model in. It's actually a really fun, almost like therapeutic way of painting because the coloring step goes really, really fast and it does really feel like you're just playing with a coloring book. There's something just absolutely joyful about this style of painting. Now, just to keep the number of colors that I use in this model really low, I'm gonna use the same color of leather here on his pants that I used for, you know, the belt and so on. Now I'm using just a little bit of a Garros Dunes for the handles of the cudgels here. Basically anything I sort of want to be a wooden type color. Now I do unfortunately let this pool up a little bit. It doesn't go on quite as thinly as I'd like. And that's on me. Next up I'm going to use a little bit of Nazdrag Yellow just for a few gold details I want to add. Basically the pommel of each of the cudgels and just a few other little bits and pieces. So here I'm using Basilicanum Grey, and this is about the only contrast paint I'm going to kind of use like a contrast paint. What I'm doing is applying a pretty thick coat of it over the chainmail that Basha has hanging off both the front and back of his loins, basically. And there's a little bit under his arms as well. And I'm really letting it pool up deeply because I want it to create outlines around each of the individual chains. I want it to fill in the little divots between them because I don't want to have to go and ink that all by hand. So by using the Basilicanum Grey here in its normal sort of contrast style, what I'm doing is letting it, you know, outline each of the little links in the chainmail. I'm also using it now, as I've been using the other colors, in thinner coats to start tinting 
you know, the metallic surfaces, the plain metallic surfaces. So, you know, in this case, the cudgels. And it's going to be the little plate on his head as well. And a few of the other little sort of bolted on plates on the armor. This is a quick one, but I'm just putting a little bit of skeleton hoard on his teeth, just so they're not pure white. Now, I've chosen to do Bash's armor in red, and I'm using Blood Angel's red from Contrast for this. And again, you can see I'm putting it on in pretty thin, even coats. I'm not letting it pool up. But what you'll notice is that a thin coat of red comes out very, very pink over this white base coat. So I'm going to be going over basically everything with two thin coats of Contrast paint, which seems so convoluted doing two thin coats of contrast but it's the effect we want here we want a pretty punchy red that still lets as much black detail show through as possible and it's really going to take two coats to get there but you can see i'm just going to work my way around and just apply this thin coat of red to the entire suit of armor basically everything at this point that's not colored So you can start to see that the red contrast paint does tint the black just a little bit. It pushes it just a little bit into like a pinky gray color. But for the most part, it's still very readable as black. It doesn't really change the tone of the character too much. So it's not the kind of thing where we'd want to feel like we have to go back and correct all the black pieces again. You know, just make sure those coats of the contrast paint are pretty thin. Don't overdo it and your blacks should be fine. So here you can see now I'm starting to apply the second coat to his belly armor there. And it is certainly a much more punchy, vibrant red now. You know, going over the shoulder pad here with that second coat. And it goes on very, very quickly. It's only a couple seconds per detail. Especially because we don't have to worry about whether we're messing the black up or not. You know, we put it on thin enough and the black just shows right on through. And we're really just tinting the white aspects of the model into the red zone. And, you know, the second coat goes on very, very quickly and just really makes the red that much more punchy. Now, the one part of this model that I didn't really discuss was the base. For the most part, I just gave it a wash of Agrax Earthshade. I picked the stones out with Space Wolves Gray and the little bits of Vine with Militarum Green. Right now, I'm just using the same black ink, the Higgins Black Magic, just to line the edge of the base. And there we have the completed Basha from Warhammer Underworld's Iron Skulls Boys. Now you could pretty quickly apply this same style to almost any other Ardboy model or for example Auric Brutes. There's just a lot of opportunity to use this kind of really heavy illustration style, especially among models like Orcs that already have a very, very cartoony aspect to them. Thanks again for watching and I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. There's plenty more coming up. I do apologize that I got this one out so long after this warband was kind of dated and it's already sort of phased out. I do have some newer warbands coming up in the near future, and I hope you'll stick around and watch them. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed that one, please hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notifications when I post new videos in the future. If you want to take your support even further, you can do that at patreon.com slash epic duck. Every little bit helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing, puts new models on the table so I can make interesting videos, and most importantly, puts a roof over my family's head and food on the table. You can also join me for live painting shows several times a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios. I'd love if you came by and watched the show sometime and followed the channel. I want to give a big thank you to everyone who's supported my content over the years, both past and present. It's been an absolutely wild ride, and I couldn't do this without all the wonderful fans and flockers out there. The hobby community is just an amazing group of people, and you really make this worth doing. So let's just keep on doing this together, making more content, and just being fantastic together for years to come. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic.